back out the same way you crept in. Make sure he hasn't alerted any further. <clears throat> he hasn't. He's just chilling on his bed. Lock the door behind us, and we are ready to move to the second floor. We're done down here. So I'm going to wait for the patroller to go by to go through the door, but use the metal gear on the contraption to open it. You can't retrieve the gear. There's no way to relock the door so that doesn't bust Supreme. Good news all around. The second floor has a couple of trouble spots too, but Clotrema seems to think they're easier than I do, so we'll see. Move through this temporarily dark area. Even in the pitch black, you can thankfully see the carpet to track through this tunnel. Now right here, you're gonna hey, wanna- Hey, did you try any of that food left over from the night's dinner party? Are you kidding? Not even rats would touch that garbage. <laughs> well, I liked it. And I'm gonna go down to the kitchen and get me some more of it. We'll have fun, Taffer. I'm gonna go look for old Benny. I bet he's getting drunk in the game room again. Oh, don't trip over your own feet in the dark again. This time, try turning on the lights. I'll see if I can find the switch. And tell Benny I'll save him some tasty morsels in the kitchen. So he will turn on the lights. Make sure to grab the metal gear off of him. That's our 18th of 23 pickpockets. But obviously we can't turn the lights off, but that's not really an issue. The first thing to do up here is tackle the second floor of the Great Hall, which I had a tough time doing in my practice run, but Clotrema says it's not that bad, so we'll see. So from here, put a metal gear in that contraption. Listen for settling remarks just to make sure nobody heard anything. And then, actually, that was pretty perfect timing. Is it just me or some you want to move pretty much right after somebody heads downstairs like that. Over there. <coughs> Maybe I'm moving too soon. I'll wait for another little cycle. There are three pieces of loot out there in the Great Hall. Just right along the patrol route. My problem was not the swordsman. They were pretty easy. My problem was the archer. I always got first alerts from her, but... We'll do a real save here as we begin our sojourn through the second floor. Oh yes, that's better timing, I think. You just kind of want to stay back of everybody. Uh, hello? Maybe I need to hold my shift key too. That. No, I think maybe speed is the key here, because I want to catch him before he makes his next turn. I want to get out of his line of sight. You saw that, right? Okay, so I can avoid him. Well, with a real save, I can quick save during the process, which is good. Over there. Okay, I'm going a little too fast, but what I want to do is get to the wall, and then move out. Who's there? And then, of course, I drew the archer. Okay. Good so far. 
one. Two, and that's an good enough for our loot objective. I want to be able to save during the process. Three. Sir, was that you? Well, if he sees me... I don't know. I don't know how to solve that. Wait for the turn. Okay, yeah, I just need her timing or er, turns to work out better. I don't like seeing things I don't know. Oh, look, she's finally facing north. How about that? Oh, it's something there. This game is just cruel sometimes. Anyway, Clotrimus was right. That wasn't nearly as bad as I remembered. What? Hello? We should be... we should be good. She'll just turn a little sooner. Alternatively, if he doesn't see me right away... Hello? Yeah, I do need her to turn. Turn! 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 Thought I saw... something. Thought I saw... Turn, please. Something there? Hello? Dang it. What's that I see? Maybe if I slow it down. So because your job is <sighs> Not that much. What? What I need to do is get to the back wall again. Garrett, don't get your rope arrow out. That's just stupid. Who's there? Hello. I need her to turn, and I need her to do it fast. Something there? That's the only uh, the only option I'm seeing is reloading until she turns faster. What? That turn actually would have worked, I think, if I'd been just a tad bit more patient. Thought I saw something. I need her to move faster than this. Turn, please. Obviously, I need to bust some serious moves before he makes his next turn, or I'm in trouble. Huh? What was that? See, I need to be past there before he starts his, before he gets down the stairs. But something there. But if I'm too far past there, the other guy will see me when he makes his turn. Oh, rough, rough, rough. What's there? I just need to get good and clear of... Oh, good, good, good. Don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. Yes! That's what I needed. Okay. Hey, look there. Okay. Well, let's go slow now. This may not work out as well as I had hoped. Is that you? Oh, there. <sighs> I 
thought this was a good spot to save. But let me see how much time I have. Okay, he sees me if I get movement illumination, so let's try creeping. Why not? See that? Uh, hello? Think we got trouble? Anyone there? Okay, yeah, they see movement, so if I creep, hopefully I can still make this work. That time we cleaned up those cesspools of filthy tappers. And every one of them had five hello? or seven. He sees me as soon as I detach from the wall. So it's what's keeping my movement slow enough. Hmm. Thought I saw something. I know this is possible without a first alert, because Clotremus says so, and he doesn't lie. Look over there. Do you see something? This is killing me. I hate this Boss. spot. Let's try speed. Hello. Show yourself. Oh, goodness, goodness gracious me. I just need to manage my creep a little better. What was that? Okay, and I do need to get to the wall. I can't cut straight across like I tried to do just then. Are the other guys going to see me? Awesome. Hey, you notice that? Don't have much time anymore. Something moved there. I might have to start this over, which is a damn shame. Is someone there? Because <clears throat> something there. <It's> there. <clears throat> is someone there? Okay, I need to move right away, or else the ground floor guy's gonna spot me. What's yeah. that? I see. Maybe need to move faster, but not too much faster. I like seeing there. things out of What was know. that? Damn it! All right, I'm in a I'm in a spot I can't get out of. I'm gonna have to restart this whole frigging loop. Right, let's try again. Give myself a little more time. One, one thousand ninety five. Two, eleven ninety five. Three, twelve forty five. Hello, sir. Was that you? Who's noising about? Sir, was that you? Oh, is he gonna see me? No matter what I do. No, he was seeing me move. That's good. I can work with that. Good. Oh, that time it went off without a hitch. Alright. Okay, I guess it's just a matter of luck. But there we go, we got it. So, to recap, we got the three pieces of loot out of the Great Hall, vases on each of the tables. That ticked off our loot objective, which is nice. And we have a total of 1245 loot, so let's move on. 
There's nothing of interest down that hallway. Up here, if you stay flush with the window, you can get by this door without comments. And then, you do want to lean in here when you have a chance. <coughs> Wait for him to turn and face the window, which he will do. Lean in and grab his key. Not again. Gotta do it. Better not be the sergeant. Hmm. Okay, let's move back a little bit. Hmm. Seeing things. I think I think we can get in range of his key without being in visual range. So. Who's there? Speak. Let's try it at least. Oh, there we go. So once you have the key, <coughs> just drop it out here. Close enough. Not again. And uh, I think I the uh, the trick to this is speed. I don't like the looks of that. If you just uh, if you get out from the door, so his visual range is narrowed, and then <laughs> sprint across his line of sight. Not again. I have been able to avoid comments from him doing that. Let me try jumping. That's even faster. I don't like the looks of that. Well, let me try getting even farther away. Not again. You made a big mistake. Okay, let's let's track him. I think he's facing the wrong way now, and I just haven't noticed. Yes, he is. Okay, let's try it. Mm -hmm. What's that? Better not be the sergeant checking up. Okay. Well, let's just use the Clotremus method then. What's that? Clotremus likes to use a rope arrow because if you climb up and jump down, somehow that keeps you out of his visual range. Just don't draw it all the way back so he doesn't hear it. Then climb up to the top. And then I guess you just Who's there? Speak up. Somehow avoid detection by passing above his visual range. Who knows? Better not be the sergeant checking up on doesn't seem to be working for me. There we go. Better not be the sergeant. But then, of course, we do have to be able to retrieve the rope as well. So. Hmm? Okay, the trick to the rope is to get down j just the right height so you pass by along the ceiling. If I ever lay eyes on the taffer who had the bright idea of okay. reports. He's gonna be sorry as so that was our 19th of 23 pickpockets. There's nothing in that bathroom either, but he did notice me grab the statue off that end table. It's another 15, brings our total to 1260. Now we'll just keep moving through here. In this room, there's a vase. Worth a full hundred, total 1360, and some reading material. Officer Morgan, cease these bribes immediately. There is more than enough street garbage we can simply scrape off the pavement that we do not need to pay for more. If your snitches could ever turn up the serious ones, I might consider it, but look at your recent list. Festal, Black Rat, Hops, these are the worst you can find, and none of them other than poor street filth. Watch Sergeant Harwin. Okay. Now it's time to tackle the game room, which is kind of tricky, but not that bad if you just realize that Benny won't alert to you during his conversation. That makes things much easier. All you have to worry about is the uh, getting everything done in time, and you have to worry about two other patrollers. Yeah, I know, that's a lot. And, um, what was I thinking? And the, uh, woman he's talking to. And the little robot moving around the room. So, actually, there's a lot to worry about. But the trick, the only thing you really need to focus on is getting the wine bottle behind the bar and getting out without any first alerts. And the way to do that is during his conversation. Now, I should note before I start that 
this is the bar we're headed to, that Clotremus disagrees with me about whether or not this is allowed. He says that since Benny would first alert if you did the exact same move after the conversation, he doesn't think the move's allowed. I understand where he's coming from. He's thinking about the spirit of the rules, but I actually think it kind of makes sense. If someone's wrapped up in the middle of a conversation, they're not going to be as focused on their surroundings. They're not going to be as alert. So it makes perfect sense to me that he wouldn't notice you while he's talking, and he would notice you after he's done. But that's me, to each his own. I think you can get this without busting Supreme, but there's obviously some debate about it. Let's tackle it. Benny, you spilled the mead on the rug. Anyway, someone is on their way up to clean it up already. But you don't understand! These Kaffirs have no respect for such beautiful things! Benny, I think you've had too much to drink. Aren't you supposed to be on duty? Huh. So, what if I am, huh? Anyways, I work better when I'm drunk. It makes me fearless! If I see a bad guy, I'll just point my Hey! Bad guy! You're not supposed to be here! Go home or I'll stick you with my sword, Jilly! You go- I can't believe this! Some- Taffer went and spilled mead all over that rug! <sighs> Benny, you spilled the mead on the rug. Anyway, someone is on their way up to clean it up already. But you don't understand! These Taffers have no respect for such beautiful things! Benny, I think you've had too much to drink. Aren't you supposed to be on duty? Uh, so, what if I am? Uh, anyways, I work better when I'm drunk. It makes me fearless. If I see a bad guy, I'll just point my sword at him and say... Hey, bad guy! You're not supposed to be here! Go home or I'll stick you with my sword, Jilly! You don't! I'll services. See? Ain't no one gonna be messing with old Benny. Whatever, Benny. I think you should go sleep it off. No more mead for you. <clears throat> okay, so... That's one of the funniest conversations in the game. So anyway, that robot, I, last time he was walking around the room, I guess he's not now. So I heard no settling remarks, so I'm going to go ahead and call it good. Let me just review everything that was in this room that I got during the conversation. The table with the robot had four pairs of coins on it. The other table had five pairs of coins and one stack of gold coins on it. There was a purse on Benny's belt. There was a balcony key on the belt of one of the patrollers. There was a bottle of wine behind the bar. There was a cup with the spilled mead on the rug. And you have to bust Supreme to get the secret. But if you... Uh, Use a water arrow to clean up the mead. That gets you your fifth of six secrets. And slides a Crayman head to the side with a necklace behind it. So, just to recap again. Two, pick po two more pickpockets in that room. Benny and the key. One secret cleaning up the mead, although you have to bust Supreme to get it. Because you use a water arrow. That busts Supreme. And the robot will hear you. But... In addition to all that, you come out with a total of 1690 loot. 
and you're ready to move on. Cross the balcony to start off. Next, we're going to have to clear the pool room, which I think is going to be tough, but Clotremus says it was no problem at all for him. So you hear peep patrollers on tile now. We want to wait until they're headed over to the other side where we saw them before. Inside the pool room, there are two pieces of loot, and at the bottom of the pool itself, I'm sorry, there are three pieces of loot, and at the bottom of the pool itself, there's a silver gear. We need to wait for the art uh, patrollers to be gone. We need to close a door so Benny doesn't alert to us, and then we'll be able to move around the room without shutting off the watcher. So with those two secured, we are at 21 out of 23 pickpockets. There are two pickpockets left. There's 410 loot left, because there's a total of 2,100. And there's one secret. On top of that, we just have our objectives. You need subjects for your servant project, and I can supply them. Vagabonds, street scum, prostitutes, those who will not be missed by anyone of consequence. There's our mechanist recording that we're going to confront and blackmail Truert with. Way to go. Okay. It's time to move. So. Okay, there's... Wow. Doesn't seem like anything now. Hey, quit tapping around. Let me see. What's that? Well, I don't see a door I can close. We're going to want to creep up on the watcher. So I think we want to head out into the room, off to the right, if possible. To avoid alerting Benny. Maybe if we hug the wall over here, we'll be okay. Uh, he heard that. He doesn't seem to be fully registering audible alerts, which is good, but... I think speed might be the key here. I get over here. Then maybe I have to do some creeping. I don't know. Actually, the watcher isn't much of a problem. Benny is the problem. We stay quiet until we get up underneath it. I think we're okay. <gasps> Just need to creep back to the shadow. Clotramus was right. That was not bad at all. Okay. Anyway, so, four things to get in there. The three pieces of loot bring our total up to 1890. The only thing we need, and we absolutely do need it, is the silver gear from the bottom of the pool. So with that in hand, we can move on. We do have to get into the armory, not really for any loot. Oh, wait, no, there is some loot in here. It also responds to the estate key. There's another watcher in here, so be wary of it. I thought you needed to deactivate these watchers, but you don't, which is nice. Remember, watchers are deaf, so as long as the patrollers aren't around, we're pretty clear to operate at, at our discretion. 
So rush into the room. Get the gold hammer off this table. Brings our total to 1940. From here, well, let's just get around the corner. Can hide right here. Hit the center, hit the bullseye with your scouting orb because it's retrievable. Keeps everything nice and quiet. Of course, you do want it to bounce somewhere that'll let you get it. Like, if it lands under the door like that, that's perfect. I just need to manage to hit the bullseye. Perfect. Oh, it's going to be tough getting it out of that corner. Anyway, hitting it again doesn't reclose. So you don't have to worry about that. But that's our sixth of six secrets. It's just a gas mine back there. I don't actually want to pick it up. At least I'm pretty sure hitting it again doesn't reclose it. Let me make sure that's the case. Okay. Retrieve the orb without any first alerts from the Watcher. I think that hit the bullseye and didn't do anything, but it's just... Yes. So see, hitting the switch again doesn't reclose it. It can't be reclosed. Not a problem. Now we just need to get out of here again. Relock this door. I went and lost my silver gear, and now I can't get up to the third floor. I tried knocking on that blasted door for an hour, but no one would open it for me. Last time I saw it was before I took a swim. Please return it to me if you find it. I will be in the game room, Officer Benny. So use the silver gear to open this door, and head up into this passage to the third floor. I'm going to do a real save here with the second floor clear, because now all the hard stuff is over. The rest is easy. We've got... Two pickpockets. I'm missing 50 loot. Oh, no, I'm not. I know where it is. Okay, good. We've got two pickpockets. We've got left to get. We've got 160 loot left to get. And other than that, we just have our objectives. But the mission's about to take a pretty dramatic twist here. Check it out. Hurry! Sound the alarm! Seal off the area! Uh, I'm going to interrupt their conversation just to say, you want to pick these two pockets as they run by. So be on high alert and get them as they go. One has a bronze gear, one has a purse. Hi, what happened? Sheriff Truard has been killed. The killer must still be in the building. What? The sheriff's been murdered? So now, obviously we can't confront the sheriff with the recording. We need to search the murder site for evidence about who killed the sheriff. I guess we did get a lot of loot, but this renders our break-in at the bank completely pointless, and all of our endeavors to get the safety deposit box key back in eavesdropping pointless. All the twists just make all the work we've done so far meaningless. It's, How? it's horrible. I don't know! Sound the alarms! Get help! There's a murderer loose! Druid's been murdered! Find the killer! Damn. Someone beat me to the sheriff. I better keep a low profile or else I'll be pinned as the killer. So I snagged both pickpockets as they went by. That's 22 and 23 for that's all of the pickpockets. Bring the purse brings our loot total to 1990 and this bronze gear we won't end up using it but well actually we will. Put it in that door to open up a nice little exit. Although, actually, no. Now that I think about it, I won't end up using it. But the third floor is a joke. There's just a little bit of loot to find, but as long as you stay out of areas you shouldn't go into, there's no problem. Let's I listen heard a to motion coming from Truett's room, but on my way to check it out, it stopped. Uh, when I got to the room, I swear I saw a dark shape running off. I should have taken a shot at him. That's when we saw the boss had been killed. Did you get a look at the killer's face? No, it was too fast. It was standing right over his body, and I must have spooked it. When it saw me, it flew right out the doors and off the balcony. I never seen anything move like that. It couldn't have been human. Don't tell me. You think a monster killed the sheriff. Like I said, I don't know what it was. I sure I'm glad I wasn't in the room when that thing was ripping up the sheriff. No one should have to die like that. All right. So, 
There are two guards standing right outside this door, and there's a whole slew of people in here, so we need to find a different way into Truert's bedroom suite. But the whole other half of the third floor is completely empty, so just don't make any noise on the tile that'll let the two guards hear you until you get into the bedroom suite. Once you're in there, you can pretty much move around with impunity. I used the bronze gear just to get rid of it instead of taking it with me. The estate key will open this door. Once you're in here, you can noise about as much as you want. Above the fireplace, there's a plate and a vase. 10 and 50 brings our loot total to 2,050. And then over in this room, under the table, is one last vase. What worth 50 brings our total to 2,100, and that's it for the mission. We've got all the loot, we've got all the secrets, we've got all the pickpockets. All that's left now is getting everything done. You can go through the attic if you want. I find it easier just to cross the balcony myself. Most It avoids some stupid darkness. Hmm? There's probably something Hello? in this room that will tell me who killed True. Now, I have never seen a patroller in here before. Things are getting weirder and weirder. Seriously, the sheriff's room... I've played... Every time I've played this mission, the sheriff's room has been empty. I've never seen a guard in there before. It'll make things more interesting, if nothing else. Let's just try and get into that doorway shadow without any alerts. There's probably something in this room that will tell me who killed Truart. Anyway, there's one other conversation to go listen to first. We can just kind of open the door, get in far enough to start it, and then hear it from the bedroom. How could the killer make his way through the estate and up to the third floor without being seen by any of the guards or servants? He must have been close to Truard. I'm not so sure. Whoever did this wasn't concerned about making it look like an accident. Killing the sheriff in his own house, in his own bedroom, makes a statement. Not the sort of thing you would do to someone close to you if you didn't want to get caught. Good point. But I still think that. Here, I'm going to leave that door open so we can actually hear the conversation. Sorry, folks. Should have done that in the first place. But then I'll just go close it when they're done talking, because it's an interesting little conversation, for sure. How could the killer make his way through the estate hmm? and up Hello? to the third... Oh my gosh. Really? Is there so well... Until the door's open. Mm, strange noises. I don't usually have to worry about making noise. I seriously have never seen this guard before. How could the killer make his way through the estate and up to the third floor without being seen by any of the guards or servants? He must have been close to Truett. I'm not so sure. Whoever did this wasn't concerned about making it look like an accident. Killing the sheriff in his own house, in his own bedroom, it makes a statement. Not the sort of thing you'd want to do to someone close to you if you didn't want to get caught. Good point, but I still think the killer had help on the inside. Oh, the sheriff lives in the most secure manner in the city. No one can get in without a key, and there's mechanist security everywhere. Yeah, I'd say it was an inside job. Not too surprising. Truett didn't show a lot of discretion when recruiting for the watch. Hell, half the force used to work for the Downwinders, Ramirez, and every other crime boss in the city. That's true. Truett made more than his share of enemies since becoming sheriff. Anyone living outside of Dayport has a decent <sighs> order. I guess the Downwinders had something to do with this. Donald wasn't too happy when we raided his casino and shut him down. He probably sent one of his ghouls to deal with the sheriff. I'm willing to bet a month's pay the entire force is dry-eyed over this. No big secret that the sheriff was dirty. I figure Lieutenant Mosley will assume control of the city watch and clean up the mess. As for me, 
I ain't gonna do a thing except go back to my desk, fill out a report, and have a mug of coffee. Well, we don't have to worry about Mosley ending up in someone's pocket. Anyone trying to bribe her would end up with a broken limb or two. Maybe we'd end up doing some good around here for a change. Okay, so we'll shut the door when he's ranged far enough away. I'm amazed at how these games can continue to surprise. So there's some reading material over here. Dear Valari, prostitution in this city is a huge problem and I plan on cleaning it up, so you should keep a low profile. I've taken the measures to protect you that we discussed. I live a demanding life now that I'm the most important person in town, and meeting with you is my only means of relaxation. I do not consider you equal to the rest of the scum that lurk the streets, so I am going to give you special treatment as long as you take care of me when I need you. Norman Druert. There's a bronze gear there we don't need. We do need Mosley's key ring. Ah. Uh. This is what I'm looking for. So with that, all that's left is to leave, but there's a bonus objective. Grab the sheriff's body. Get back to the shadow. Wait for him to leave again. Amazing that he doesn't notice the murder victim has disappeared, but... So... Head out here... Shut that... Let's do a real save, because... We're basically just getting out now. So let's... Hop over the balcony... Drop Truert down a level... Now we can slide down without any damage, as long as we... Hit two sort of intermediate stops. I missed. I missed one. So get what from the railing. You want to hit the stone on the other side first. You can see how it hangs out a little bit, and then you want to hit the door, or the more accurately, the overhang above the door on your way down, and that makes it possible to descend to the second level with no damage. So let's do another save. Get up on the balcony, drop Truert, and back up. And I don't think anyone will notice this corpse. I don't want to make my descent until the other guy is on his way out. But I need to make sure he doesn't notice the corpse, too. So. Let's listen carefully for alerts. I hear none. So, you can make this drop without any damage, too. Just hop up on the railing. <coughs> and then, you kind of have to aim for those light posts at the top of the stairs. But, if you manage it, you should deflect without any damage. Nice and easy. So first, let's grab Truert's body and get it outside before he turns around. We'll leave it here, it'll be safe. Now for Supreme, we have to go return our keys. So I'm gonna do that right quick. The balcony key is from this kind fellow right here, so we'll hold on to it until our estate key is given back. I held on to the servant's copy. So, with that in mind...
it back up. In through the back foyer like before. This time, I want to just cut straight through the Who's dining there? room if I can. So, once we're inside the, uh... Well, I guess it's not that big a deal to do the, the full circuit, but I'd rather not. If she'll just turn north... Something there? She'll turn and face the kitchen and get to the fireplace, and then I can slip in behind her. Excellent. So, this is the shadow you want to work from. It's nice and easy. Then you can just... What was that? You have to get a little farther into the uh, tiled area before, Who's she, there? before she makes her second spit, makes her next spin, but. That was not an alert, so we're good. So from, here, oops, so from here, we're much closer to the uh, servant, and we just need to drop the key somewhere on his route. someone there okay probably have to wait for at least that patroller to get by too <sighs> and maybe even the third one mm, moving counterclockwise is a pain but the uh the archer in the dining room pretty much forces it on you. Yeah, he's right hey. here. And okay, we'll wait for him, and then we should be able to get to the servant's route pretty easily. <coughs> I thought this would be a cushier job than on private guard duty. This is what I know. Sure, it's just as bad as those really bloody novels. Except he don't want to know how to kick back and take it easy. Happen on duty for short walking patrol. Sir, was that you? Okay, probably have to wait in the servants' quarters for him to get. Okay, uh, what? Garrett, 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 Garrett. No problem, we'll wait in the servants' quarters for the third guy to go by. Or the first guy, since it seems like he's moving faster. I don't know. It'll be so easy. <clears throat> Once I just drop the key and can switch and head counterclockwise instead. So just... Who's there? <laughs> okay, we also have to wait for the servant himself. One last hiccup. It's always there. Always. So, let's just... Stay out of his line of sight. Wait for him to turn around and leave. Drop the key on the carpet. Oh my gosh, no, 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 no. <laughs> this has to be over. Don't like seeing things I don't know. <laughs> Oops. 
Oops, that was the balcony key. Is someone there? That was too fast. Garrett, Garrett, come on, you're killing me. To the carpet. Drop the key. That's as much as route as anything. Down the hall. Shut the door. Farther down the hall. Good. I did not want to wait a whole nother cycle. So... From here, it's just a simple matter of following the guard's patrol route. That should allow you to avoid any trouble very nicely. The estate key is back in its spot. Just make sure not to make any noise. Cross over while you're out of her visual range. We do still have the guy out here to worry about, so... Let's just be careful. Lock that door behind us. We'll wait until we see him and follow him out one last time, and we'll just drop our balcony key anywhere on his route. around, get in behind him, drop the key right on his route, while he's crossing the bridge, head over to where we left Truert, pick him up, we've got time, so let's head back across, all the way till we get into these other shadows. Alright! Now we're... We just have one last bit of darkness to deal with. It's the last obstacle. We're out of danger. Nothing's going to see us or hear us. So from the river... Just get back to the long passage. Run back to the west until you... Run up against the wall. Again, use the skyline to navigate since it's so dark. When you when you see the wall in front of you, turn left and mantle up onto the rocks. As we have to get to the graveyard again. And put Truard in the fresh grave. That ticks off the bonus objective to bury the differences between us and Truard. So now just kind of feel your way back out of the graveyard the same way we did when we came here at the start of the mission. admittedly hard to do but I consider cranking the gamma cheating so there make it out quick save with that feel your way to the tunnel there then again, just follow the skyline back to the west. And you can see the bushes at the original crack we snuck in through once we head out of there. Mission's over. Alright, so we have their perfect thief in blackmail. Supreme is Supreme ghosting it is possible. It requires you to skip the silver nugget between the chapel and the bedroom, because picking open the door wakes up the sleeper. You have to skip the silver nugget in the guard quarters, because picking open the chest wakes up the guard. You have to skip the secret in Benny's room in the game room because using the water arrow is the supreme bust and uh, 
the robot will hear you in first alert. You arguably have to skip the silver nugget between the chapel dungeon and the torture room, because getting it requires an engine exploit leaning through the grate, and Clotremus may have a point that Supreme requires skipping the wine bottle in the game room, because even though Benny didn't first alert, if you think about the spirit of the rules, Clotremus may be right that doing something that would cause a first alert once the conversation was over shouldn't be allowed. But skipping those five pieces of loot, you can still easily get the 1100 for the objective, and that would be supreming it. But we supremed the rest of it. You can get all the pickpockets with no first alerts. Let's look at our stats right quick. 1 hour, 46 minutes, 39 seconds. 2100 loot out of 2100. 23 out of 25 pockets. That's the purse on the corpse in the torture room and the ever-present Thief 2 bug. Locks picked, too. No backstabs or knockouts, no damage dealt or taken, no healing taken, nothing and no one killed, no iron beast disabled or destroyed, found six out of five secrets. I don't know why the total is off there, but it is. There are definitely six secrets in the mission. We also completed the bonus objective, lest we forget. Campaign so far, 9 hours, 20 minutes, 24 seconds, 12,801 loot, 8 damage dealt, the 8 knockouts in running interference, and received 0. So that's that. That's Blackmail. Awesome. I will see you guys next time for Trace the Courier. Bye bye